So uh, well, Hank, um, welcome to Behind the Braves. Uh, it's a privilege to have you here. Thanks for making the time to come in. And um, we're typically, um, we go up in the alumni lounge, but today we chose to be in uh, the uh, Braves clubhouse. So uh, welcome. How and about glad that? you're here. Yeah. Thank you. Good timing. Looks nice. Yeah, well, this yeah they've done a great job here. This new stadium and and uh, just everywhere you go, it's just it's good looking, good looking place to be, right? <laughs> Looks a little bit better than the place where I used to play <laughs> in, in in Atlanta. Yeah, I, I looked at this clubhouse and I said, boy, uh, mm -mm. yeah, uh, these clubhouses and these stalls where these guys are. Or something to behold. They're, they're beautiful. They're well, beautiful. I played in the old um, Milwaukee Stadium uh -huh. where you spent a lot of time, you know, a lot of your career right. up in Milwaukee and, you know, before they built the new place. So, yeah, I got a little bit of – it was probably nicer when I played there even when you were there. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. Yeah. This this whole stadium is beautiful. Well, today, I um, don't, know don't know if you know us, but today is Jackie Robinson's 100th birthday. Did, were you aware of that? So th no, today? I was, no, I was yeah. not aware of that. Yeah, thanks, so thanks, thanks for telling me. Yeah, so I just found out that myself, yeah, yeah. and obviously you have a very close connection with him. And um, but but one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on um, this week is is to talk about this is Black History Month in February, so we're excited about that and all the things that we're doing as a Braves organization to celebrate. Um, uh, Black History Month, but then I know that as I saw that Jackie Robinson, it was his hundredth birthday today, the day that we're actually taping. I just wanted to talk, um, get your your perspective about Jackie because I, I remember reading an article about when you were a kid, you actually went to go see him speak in your hometown in Mobile, and how that impacted you. And then when you were, and then later on as your career started, his was kind of endings mm -hmm. ending, and then mm -hmm. and then what kind of interaction that you had with him at that point. Well, he was um, he was someone I think about quite often, mm -hmm. even now. You know, I think about if it had not been for Jackie, what my career would have been like, you know, thinking about all of the things I had to go through and things that he went through before and had to endure. I mean, really had to play baseball and also had to worry about what people might say or mm -hmm. do or say you know, and I think about that, and I, I say, you know, uh, I don't know many people would have done that. I, I don't know many people would have sat back and and taken all the abuse that he did. Mm. You know, it was it was quite a bit, and uh, I got to know him quite well. He died, of course, uh, a little bit after I got into baseball. I got to know his wife Rachel very very well. His children got to know them well, but. Um, Jack and I, you know, he, he taught me not only how to play the game, what baseball was all about, and how to play it. You know, I mean, really, I I got to, to know how to uh, uh, figure out how to win baseball games, uh, how not to worry about anything happening to the game, but what you could do, you know. And, and he always, he, he said something that, even I think about it right now. He said, if you want to do something for your team, uh, you want to be a, a, a teammate, the kind of teammate that you should be, figure out a way that you can go from home plate and come back around and touch home plate again for the, your team. And that made me think about it. I said, you know, you know out of all of my career, you know, I, I thought about that. And I thought about it um, – and I said, what can I do in order to help my team? And I led our league. I led my team in a lot of areas in that department. You know, I wanted to make sure that no matter what I did, I could hit 300. I could hit, I could knock in 100 runs. But the most important thing is what I'm doing for my teammates to help them win ball games. Yeah, that's a great um, that's a great perspective, and obviously you took kind of the the shortcut. You just went ahead and hit it out of the ballpark, <laughs> which is <laughs> the easiest way to do it, right? <laughs> but uh, one thing that I really wanted to ask you about before we move on to something else was that 1954, your rookie in Milwaukee, and you're going to Brooklyn for the first time, 
and Jackie is still playing for the Dodgers. So what was that like going in as a rookie? Did you know him at that point? Um, had you had much interaction? But did you guys meet, like nowadays they meet at second base and they talk and say hi. Was that appropriate at that time? Did you guys ever talk beforehand? Or what was it like the first time when you actually got to play against him in the big leagues? Well, you know, back then, I'm talking about way back then, of course, when we were playing, you bond stomp and then bond stomp and you played against each other. Every, every, you, you go through the South, you play in Mobile, you play in Birmingham, and you play et cetera. And I got a chance to meet him, but not on a casual basis, not, not any more than just speaking to him and scared to say anything else. <laughs> 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 I just bet. listening, just listening to him, you know, really. But you know, I got to I got to respect him. I really did. I got to respect him, and he didn't go out of the hotel very much hmm. because he was he was afraid. Uh, didn't talk very much, and then all of a sudden, you know, he opened up one day and he got to talking, and oh, he <laughs> had a, he, had, he had a listener. <laughs> he had someone who was listening to him. <laughs> yeah, that's but good. that's how I got to know him. You know, really. He was a wonderful person, uh, very much involved in all of the things that was happening in the world, you know, like mm. the civil rights and et cetera. Yeah, that's great. Well, in, in talking about uh, Jackie's legacy and then the legacy that you helped carry on after him, it, it's been it's somewhat sad like in the last few decades we've kind of seen a decline in the number of African-American ballplayers in, in the big leagues. And it's you know, to Major League Baseball's credit, they are doing some good programs. The the reviving baseball in inner cities, the RBI program, uh, is good. And last year we saw a little bit higher. The trend seems to be going in the right direction. Or there were more African American ball players in the big leagues on the opening day rosters last year than there had been in a few years. But to that end, how do we? What do you think we need to be doing a better job of to get more young African American athletes? just playing baseball and hopefully eventually into the big leagues. There are so many things I can tell you right now. We can sit here and talk for 45 minutes, and I can tell you the reason why we don't have many Africans, <clears throat> pardon me, in, in, in professional baseball. One is that, um, and I said this for the whole country, you know, we have, when we have, um, uh, uh, how can you say it? When you have a, 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 a system where you have, when the mother going in to work in the morning, she comes home, and in the afternoon the father goes out at night and work, you have nobody at home to teach the kid anything other than to say, uh, go home, go to bed, and wake up and do the same thing. Uh, we, have, we have so many different things that we have, so many problems that we have, uh, of trying to figure out a way that we can keep black ball players playing baseball. Uh, there's no, well, there's no system. And the reason there is no system is because they got no way, nowhere to play. There is absolutely nowhere to play. And Major League Baseball is trying to do something about that. Uh, I do know that the commissioner and I have talked on several occasions, and he too is is, is uh, a little bit concerned with that, you know. And uh, uh, the only thing that we can do, and and we're gonna try it this year, uh, myself along with uh, uh, some other people, we're gonna try to make sure that we have a place for baseball players to play. Because, as you know, you know, baseball, unlike any other sport, and not taking anything away from anything like basketball, football, anything, but you can't put a a baseball diamond <laughs> in in the rough. You know, you got you got to have a a system in which to make sure that a baseball player can sit there and play. You know, unlike myself, when I grew up in Mobile, Alabama. I played on what we call in spite of. I played in, on grass, picked up things I thought was a baseball, but it wasn't. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but the good Lord was, was, uh, was 
had his hand on my shoulder. You know, he 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 he, he looked at me and he said, "I'm going to make this kid what I want him to do, and I'm going to make him a baseball player." Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen you um, come to Marquise Grissom's event. And, um, you know, Brian jo- we got guys like Brian Jordan that are very involved in the youth community here in Atlanta. And Marquise has done a really good job. I've always appreciated what he's been doing because he, uh, he has a Marquise Grissom Baseball Association. And so he's really involved with trying to promote the game and develop kids at a high level. So helping them get scholarships to college, helping them um, – you know, with their even at the ages of 10, 11, 12, where they're they're involved in travel ball, getting the parents involved and, and really developing them not only from character standpoint, but an education mm-hmm. standpoint, mm-hmm. as well as he has really good teams. Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys play all over the country and they do. And then even with what we're doing here with the RBI uh, program Didn't that agree. you're involved in, we we love it how yeah. the Braves have, have decided that this is going to be a focus of ours with the, you know, with the Hank Aaron Classic and, and the you know, all the things that we're doing with um, with the RBI is really cool. With the Major League Baseball, we're partnering with them and doing mm-hmm. the development program down mm-hmm. in Florida. Right. So that's been great. We really appreciate you getting involved in that. But it's been great for me to see, as a as alumni director, see you partner with some of our other alumni who are actually doing a lot of that work on the you know on the ground. And it's been great because it's something you've been talking about for years, and now to see it kind of be full circle and seeing what now the organization's jumping on board. It's been it's been a lot of fun to see. Well, I must say you are doing a wonderful job. I, Thank you. I, I I think I remember when you started. <laughs> we had a few conversations, <laughs> yeah, right? Had a few conversations, and you did some hard work. I mean, you put some hard work in, and you have done a tremendous job. Well, and I must you. congratulate you. And speaking of Marquise Grissom, Marquise and I have talked about it on several occasions. And we've talked about it, what what it is that I can do. But you have to remember that I am no longer 15 years <laughs> old. <laughs> I have, my birthday is coming up in about four or five days from now. Oh, wow. I, I, big plans? I, uh, yeah, my <laughs> wife always have big Billy's plans. Billy's got a big surprise she party has, for yeah, you? Yeah, she always has. <laughs> and I will be a big 85. So wow. <laughs> so I'm okay. not I'm not a... I'm not a spring chicken, so I <laughs> I have to I have to take whatever is is given me, you know. But but I've I've tried to help. Marquise has done such a marvelous job. Mm. I mean, really, and you've helped him out, and the Atlanta Braves have helped him out, and he and his wife both mm-hmm. has done such a tremendous job, you know, really. And I just want to say congratulations to him. And I've talked to him, and I'm going to try to help as much as I can. Now, how much is that? I don't know. But I'm gonna do his well, I know he really appreciates just the fact yeah. that you come down and you came to his golf tournament and and just right. answer questions and people see that you're supporting him. That's that's huge. I mean, right. It's just great for and that's one thing you know. I think with the alumni, we there's a lot of guys supporting each other, and I think that's what it takes, especially in our community. If we want to see, we need to be the poster child for you know um, for the young ball players, black ball players that are that are going into high school and college and, and making the big leagues, if we can't do it in our own backyard, then why should we expect the rest of the country to be able to do that? I think we've got a great opportunity That's here true. to, to, to um, change. That's Absolutely. true. One thing I wanted to ask you about, um, there's been a lot of talk, especially last season, about um, I guess we would call it the amount of emotion that ball players show now and the bat flips and the, and the excitement and, and all of that. And I'll admit, I was, you know, I grew up watching baseball and I was a little bit old school in that I didn't care for all the bat flips and all that kind of stuff. But then, but then I watched somebody like Ronald Acuna Jr. play every day and the excitement and how much fun he has on the ball field. And I think we're heading in a good direction where we want guys to have, we want them to show more emotion like that. And we want them to have, have more fun and show that they're having more Mm -hmm. fun. Do -hmm. you think that, like, and I'm using bat flips just as one example, but do you think that younger ball players, showing more emotion is good for the game and the growth of the game? I think in some ways it does. You know, in, in some ways I I love to see emotion. I, I, I for one, in fact, um, I've talked to several ball players, and I don't think that um, I have ever threw a bat in my whole <laughs> right. 23 years that I played baseball. I didn't throw a bat. 
Uh, I never felt like uh, it was the bat fault for me striking out. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, the thing that I, I think the thing that bothers me is the fact that do you want to send the same message to your kid? Uh, I see young players now, without naming any names, take a bat and break it across their legs and all that. I don't know whether they want somebody to know how strong they are or what. I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea. But is is that the way you want to teach your son how to play how to play the game? You want to teach him emotion. You want to teach him how to do the how to play the game, but play it the right way. Uh, I I struck out. Uh, well, I, I'm blessed that I played the game for 23 years and never had a hundred times I struck out in a, in, a, in a season. But the most important thing is that when I struck out at a plate at the plate, I always went back to my hotel room and got me a bat and looked in the mirror and said, something is wrong. It ain't the bat, it's me. And I found out that it was not the bat, it was me that was striking out. But, you know, yeah, you want, you want them to have fun because that's what the game is all about. You want your kids to have fun and – it's so much money involved in base and sports now, you know. Until somehow I think that, and 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 not saying I wish they'd have given it to me. I wish they had. Yeah, right. But the most important, <laughs> the thing that bothers me is the fact that it 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 troubles youngster because you see players making the kind of money that these guys are making. It is absolutely absurd to 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 to, to, to do it. You know, really. Uh, I think they've got to figure out a way. You got to figure out some kind of way that you can teach your young, young, your young kid, whether it's a girl or boy, how to play the game. And the game is played. I, I loved it. Twenty-three years, I loved playing baseball. I didn't sling one bat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to sling one bat, and I always thought that it was somebody else's fault other than me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I want to ask you about one thing that I was I read and I actually heard that um, some of the guys that you played with um, made the comment that you always knew what the hit, the pitcher was going to do to you. So you see guys with little black books, or you know they kept a chart or they they wrote notes, but you they seem to from what I was I was hearing that you seem to know all the pitchers that you were going to face. You seem to know how they were going to try to get you out, and you were prepared for that. So did you just have um, just an innate ability, or did something you worked on, or did you just kind of – that was just something that just came natural to you, or did you go back and think about, okay, now this guy, he got me out this way, and so next time I'm going to be ready for he does when he does that. How did that, how did that come about for you? I think I studied I, – I, I studied baseball a little bit more than – you know, and this takes nothing away from my great friend who passed away a few years ago, Eddie Matthews, mm. who's also in the Hall of Fame, <clears throat> who passed away. And Eddie and I were, were very good friends. But I could tell you, I could tell you from the, the first day of the baseball season to the last day of the baseball season, who I got a home run off of, who I hit it off of, what pitch it was, and et cetera. Mm. I studied. I studied pitches. I, I thought that uh, hey, you know, I'm only one person, and they got a gang on me. So I decided that I was going to do the very best I could, and and study it. You know, and they 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 they're right. They 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 they're right. Most of them, mm. but uh, I, I didn't. But you know, I I I took I took it very serious. Uh, you know, I. I I I say that not just because my career is over now, but I took baseball very seriously. It was a job. It was a job, and I played it like it was a job. Each game I went out there and played it the same way, no matter whether I was playing an exhibition game or whether I was playing uh, in um, uh, or just a regular game. I, I wanted to make sure that <clears throat> whatever I did, that I was going to be the people or whoever's come, come to the game was going to be able to say, you know, I saw Hank Aaron play last night. 
you. Well, you you look serious. The footage I've seen of you, even in the the old home run derby, um, remember the competitions? <laughs> I watched those when I was a kid, and they were reruns at that time. But still, those those were those were unbelievable. Even in those, you were super serious. <laughs> well, <laughs> those were great. You had to love winning all that money, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> I tell you, that was a, that was a funny story about that. You know, from I was living in Mobile, Alabama at the time. And Frank Scott, who's an agent, like most of the agents you have, these guys mm-hmm. have now, he was an agent for most of the players in uh, New York City. Well, he called me up and he said, Hank, he said, I got a deal for you. He said, if you want to come to um, uh, uh, Los Angeles, I got a deal where you, the more home runs you hit, the more money you get, you know. And I said, oh, my God, what can I do? <laughs> and then I, thought, then I thought about my daddy. And my daddy had wanted a a grocery store in Mobile for a long time. He had wanted it. And I said, this may give me an opportunity to win some money for him and to buy this grocery store. And little did I know, I packed my bag and I left. And I knew, I knew within my whole mind that I was not going to get a second chance. Mm. There was absolutely no way that I was going to go over Willie May. Mickey Mantle, all these guys from New York City, they wasn't going to think about Hank Aaron in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was not going to get a second chance. Hmm. And I said, I'll be damned if I'm going to let this pass by. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the lifetime. This is going to yeah. be it. I'm not going to let this happen. And I stayed there, and I won more money yeah, you did. than anybody on the team. I mean, not on the team, but on that whole thing. On that show, yeah. Yeah, on that show. I, I won more money and then buy on the show. And then I went and bought my father the grocery store. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a great yeah, story. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> what, what was the name of the grocery store? Aaron Gro- – well, we named it Aaron Grocery Store. Aaron's Grocery Store. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Nice. Yeah. That is great. But it was it was something that he wanted all his life. And he had worked in there as a little boy hmm. growing up. And he wanted it for himself, so I – was able to get it. I think I won something like, I don't know, like twenty thousand dollars. I think I won. It's close. That's to pretty it. good. Uh, Back was, then, it was. Uh, hey, that's right up your alley too. All <laughs> I do is hit home runs. It that's right. Like it, it looked like it was in Wrigley, but you said it was in Los Angeles. Is it? Is it? No, it's in Los Angeles. Oh, it was. Okay. It's in Wrigley Field. Okay. Old Rig. Old, old. You remember old the old the, the Wrigley Field that they played in in Los Angeles? No, no, I didn't yeah. know that. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they modeled the the other one similar like that. Similar. To oh, okay. It, yeah, because yeah, when I looked at it as a kid, I'm thinking because I grew up watching the Cubs during the day and the Braves at night. Yeah. And I just thought it was the same place. But, yeah. Uh, that's cool. No, we had we had a lot of fun, and then I stayed there, and boy, every day I was, and I did a lot of things like hitting four home runs in a row and da 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 da. Mm-hmm. So I had I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I bet it's I always good being able to win some money like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 That's perfect. Oh, I, I know that you know when you have make you have accomplishments in your career for yourself. Or it's always great for yourself, and you feel great about it. But I would think that feeling of being able to give your father his dream. I mean, that has to be some other level of that has to be that has to feel better than anything you can do for yourself. I would think it right? was one of the two of the greatest things I ever done in my life for my parents. You know, really, I I, I played baseball, and they were alive when I hit the home run. My mother was alive, and my father. Mm. Well, alive when they saw me hit the home run. Wow! And you, you know, I, my, I, you can kind of say I was a mother's boy or something, <laughs> because being in Milwaukee, being here, I'm sorry, in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and if we had an off day, I would catch a plane and go home, and would be with her. <laughs> I'll put my hand up. I'm a mama's boy. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. proud of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I, I completely understand yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I, I want to get in just a little bit about your post career um, because you and I've had this conversation. I've always been fascinated with. It seems like that you went from uh, you know one of the best careers ever in baseball to you didn't miss a beat. You went right into uh, your second career of of working with the Braves. You know, Ted Turner hired you, and you worked in the front office with the Braves. But then simultaneously, you were a little bit of an entrepreneur. You told me that you you've owned Krispy Kremes and churches, fried chicken, and and BMW dealerships, and you've had a lot of things, and you've had a lot of success in that area too. 
So for, for me as a guy who works with alumni that are trying to transition out of one career into another, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's not an easy thing to do. It's, it's very not. tricky. You know, business doesn't come as natural to us as playing ball. It's something we did. You know, it's a cumulative thing where yeah. you, you learn baseball, you learn every year. Well, business, we don't, we don't do that. So all of a sudden you get into it. So I, I think it's just a great story you, you share with me just on how that happened. But I, I would love to hear that again. Just how were you able to make that transition into a second career and be successful at it right away? I, I think it's just uh, knowing who I was, you know, as as a person. I had no more business knowledge than the average person. But I think I went in there with the idea of saying to myself that, if I was going to own a dealership, and I was fortunate enough to own four of them, all four of them, and then I was able, fortunate enough to sell all four of them, mm. and then I own the donut place, I own Krispy Kreme, then I own 25 or 26 uh, uh, Popeyes, Church's Chicken. I felt like if I was going to get into business, I had to go in there with the idea of treating everybody, no matter who it was, no matter what they came into my store to buy. If they came in to buy a hubcap versus a motor, I would treat that person the same as I would treat anybody. I would treat anybody that would come in and buy a a dozen donuts versus uh, 12 dozen donuts. I would treat everybody who walked in my dealership, regardless of whether it was selling donuts or doing other things, treat them the same way that I would treat anybody. And I said to myself, if I'm going to go into business, this is what I have to do. And I was lucky enough in my time that I got out of baseball, that I got involved with Ted Turner, always be very thankful to him and he treated me just about as well as I could ever be treated I remember I remember he called me up one day and I was in Milwaukee and he wanted me to be the he wanted me to be the um, uh, the, the farm director and I said oh my well, that's <laughs> a big job <laughs> and so I said yes before I could say anything else no money involved, <laughs> but I I took it as a challenge, and I got and I and, and I got to got to be his his farm director. And I remember my first year in West Palm Beach. That that's what I'm trying to think. We didn't have all the guys. Most all of them, all of them had holes in their pants and holes in their pants, and most of them was chewing tobacco. Hmm. And I said, something has got to give. <laughs> I said, something got I said, maybe I can bring something to them. And so I talked to them for a long time, talked about them chewing tobacco and playing the game of baseball. And what I did, went downtown, not downtown, I'm sorry, from bought, I got Susan to order 150 uniforms Susan, your long-time my, my executive long, assistant. Yes, yeah. yes, I got her to order all these uniforms. And somebody said, you can't do that. Ted is going to have a fit. <laughs> I said, well, we got to start somewhere. And I wanted to order them, and I ordered them with no back pockets. <laughs> there were no back pockets. No, no back no pockets. Dip and yeah, you can't. In there. <laughs> yeah, and I, said, and I had a meeting with them every single day. I said, now, if you guys want to chew, I said, let me tell you, please. Go over or out of the field and chew your tobacco. Don't spit it over here, <laughs> please. And so I had a I had a rough t- I had not not a rough time with them, but you know we had some pretty good ball players that come up through there. You know, yeah, yes. Well, Leo Mazzoni was telling me some stories. You know, he was one of your coaches. He was, and uh, he was just down at fantasy camp with us, and he was telling me some funny stories of. Of just you know some of the early years of, of playing ball, and of course you had Ron Gant and, and David Justice. I mean all all my former teammates. Yes. You had them in the minor leagues, and I think I came in right after you were transitioning. Yeah. But but yeah, hearing some of those stories was great. Well, Ron Gant was I never forget. Ron Gant was he 
he was um, he was a ball player, but he was so fast. He reminds you so much. He reminds you so much of the kid that plays football now with the Ravens, the quarterback. That, oh, Lamar Jackson. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that runs like the wind. Mm-hmm. And that's the way this boy was. And every single night, every night, we would have a meeting. Not one night. <laughs> we have a meeting every night. I mean, I have all of their instructors there. We have a room like this. And we would have to go over every one of the ball players. Ron Gant name would come up every single night. <laughs> why? I said, why? He can't hit. <laughs> Most of them say he can't hit. I said, yeah. I said, but you have to remember one thing. He can run like the deer. I said, he, we, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta give him a little bit of break. Yeah. I said, I'm, 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 I'm not willing to get rid of him. Well, he learned to hit. He so did. He maybe, learned to hit. Maybe he had some yeah. one-on-ones with him. Well, <laughs> what what happened was that we put we we. You probably heard of this. Put some bats in behind him so he wouldn't step out of the oh, batter's box. He's bailing in the bucket. He's huh? bailing, yeah, he's bailing <laughs> out of the bucket. We did all these things, and pretty soon he caught on. He caught on, and when he caught on, he was oh, he geez. caught fire. He was a heck of you a know, player. You know, he's a heck of a player. <laughs> you know, really. So you know, I I was not gonna let that trickle down. Man. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Weren't you, and I believe I've read, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I've read that you were instrumental in the Braves drafting Chipper Jones in 1990. Is that the, did you have a hand in helping draft and oversee the uh, Chipper becoming a Braves? Well, let me, let me tell you a story about that because it's, it's been so many stories. Okay. And unwritten stories about it. And I remember that so many teams wanted to play, a, I'm trying to think of the kid's name, was, was a pitcher. Oh, Todd Van Poppel, is that it? Is that, that, is that I, right, I that think that's who he was. Yeah, that's and right. Van, and I went to see him pitch, and that must have been 15, I guess, uh, people were down there watching him pitch. And his father, Ben Poplar's father, called me to the side. And he said, Hank, I want to talk to you. He said, listen, he said, he said my son is going to be the number one draft pick. He said, but he's not going to play with the Braves. I said, oh, is that right? He said, no, he's not going to play the break. And I said, oh, well, well. Then we had another one, Chip, I think. I said, which I was kind of leaning toward myself. Well, everybody wanted Van Poppel. And I said, man, I said, y'all can't. <laughs> y'all can try to get Chip. I said, Chip is your ball player. And if I talked him into taking Chip instead of. Van Poppel. Well, that was, that <laughs> was a lot of wisdom there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 the franchise thanks you, right? Yeah. 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 So, that's great. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Chipper was uh, – and then there had been stories saying that, you know, somebody else – well, that's all right. That's a fine. That's yeah. fine. It's, you know. That's great. Who cares? He, Chip is now in the Hall of Fame and oh, done well that? for himself. So That's great. That's good. Well, we want to be real respectful of your time. This has been great. I do want to ask you about um, just – your influence on um, some of the other former teammates, executives, been in baseball in particular, Dusty Baker and Bill Lucas. So um, I was with Dusty last year, and Dusty made the comment that when he was – his parents wanted him to go to college, but um, the Braves wanted to sign him. And, And if it hadn't been for you talking with his mom, and dad's about taking care of him and watching out for him because he looked up, you know, you were kind of his mentor, you were his big brother, that he might not have ever been an Atlanta Brave. Mm-hmm. And so I think about your legacy with him. He goes on to become an unbelievable manager for many, many years in the big leagues. Um, so I just would like love for you to hear just to comment on, on Dusty because at one point I did hear you say, in some interviews that you wanted to be a big league manager. Mm-hmm. You wanted to be an owner, you know, some different things in, in that weren't weren't there. The opportunities weren't there at the time. But then to see somebody like who you mentored become this manager, um, just how that made you feel and, and what you thought about that. Well, Dusty's mother, I was already playing baseball. And she, you know, Dusty was quite an athlete. I mean, he was a great athlete. He wasn't only just a baseball player. He could play basketball, could play football, and he was uh, he could do it all and do it well. 
And so we had to figure out what we need to do in order to keep him there. You know, his, his mother didn't want him. His mother wanted him to go to college. That's what she wanted. She wanted him to go to college, get an education, which is where most mothers want their child to go. And he came to me, and she came to me, and she told me, she said, Hank, she said, um, what I'm going to do, she said, I'm, I'm going to turn him loose, she said, but you going to be responsible. <laughs> I can't be responsible for myself. <laughs> she, she wanted me to be responsible. And little did I know when he when he when he when he when he finished his career at at, at school, he came up, I think he was only eighteen, nineteen years old. Dustin went right on smooth sail, you know, went right on to big leagues, you know. Yeah. So so he 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 and Ralph Gar was such right. great great friends and they both came right on through the big leagues yeah. together, you know, and Fortunate that uh, I got traded my last year in baseball, and somebody asked me, he said, what do you think Dustin Raff going to do? I said, he's going to trade him. Mm. And sure enough, Dusty went to Los Angeles, and Raff, I think, went to Chicago. I think one of them. Dusty was on deck when you hit 715, right? Yes. Would, would you say anything to him? Did he say anything to you? Or yeah, were you too I, zoned in? Well, we both was kind of – talk to each other you know we dress side of each other we talk to each other uh, yeah i just i just thought the the world of he he and raf both you know they they both were very good ball players and only raf was probably a little older than dusty yeah Gators but they, awesome. but but they but they both were very good ball mm -hmm. players good people yeah, very good Absolutely. Anything else? Yeah, I think uh, that's it. And I, I encourage everybody to check out what the work Hank does with the Hank Aaron Chasing the Dream Foundation. That's that's yeah. a fantastic foundation. Thank you. And um, I know we just want to implore everybody that's listening to to check out your work with that. And the, we've got the Hank Aaron uh, Invitational coming up this summer and the 44 Classic here. So it's a lot of a lot of great work you're still continuing to do today. And we uh, we very much appreciate it. And we want all the Braves country to support it as much as they can. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I just want to say – to both of you guys, y'all do such a marvelous job. I mean, I I don't know. I I remember when we first started, I don't know where we first started, but I remember talking to you in the clubhouse, not in the clubhouse, in the, the, in, the, in the office, there, yeah. yeah, about this and and like like you, you you it was a dream, I guess, and and so much for you and yeah. and look where you are now, you know, and and. You have done a tremendous job. Well, Let me say that. Well, thank you. Yeah, and, you know, and you've a lot of support yeah. from you, and yeah. much appreciated from our early talks. And yeah, and um, you know, I was looking for some people to to kind of be involved, and and you were always there to listen. So really appreciate uh, all that you've done. And of course, you know, you are our most famous alumni. So just the fact that you give us time to hear and be on this is a new project for ricky and i behind well, the Braves. good luck and, to you guys yeah thank you yeah. i think i think you're gonna do well i think you're gonna do very well this well. may put us on the map well i hope so <laughs> well i hope i'm gonna keep my fingers and that's right it's crossed too are we gonna get you you're gonna be able to download we're gonna get you to subscribe to yes. behind the Braves. yes we'll, okay. we'll get cedric to help yeah help you out there. yeah, there yeah. We go. <laughs> well good deal sure, well, thank yeah. you so much hank thank you you're so much, quite hank. welcome and good luck to both of you guys thank you so much i think you guys have done a marvelous job and keep on pushing. All right, great. Thank, Thank you, you so yeah. much.